part of the Boundless Audio Podcast Network. Hello, welcome to the Artist Pivot Podcast. My name is Ayana Major Bay, and I am an actress, voiceover artist, mentor, and your host. This show is a bi-weekly conversation highlighting pivots and life lessons from the perspective of artists, those who work in and around the arts, and arts educators. For those listening who don't consider themselves artists, you can pivot too. Everyone possesses the ability to do so. You just have to be reminded sometimes. All of our life lessons have taught us to be better pivoters, and it is my goal to share these life lessons to guide and inspire others. Here is this week's episode. All right, y'all. Today on the podcast, I am so excited to say that joining me is Shireen Babb. Shireen is an award-winning actress who is passionate and committed to diversity, creativity, and professionalism. In addition to more than 20 years of acting experience, Shireen has a BFA in musical theater, an MA from East 15 Acting Conservatory in London, and an MFA from USD, the Old Globe, in classical theater. Shireen's Support students by serving as an instructor at New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts and mentor to aspiring actors and artists. Shireen is an AEA and SAG-AFTRA union actress who can be seen in theatrical productions on Broadway, off-Broadway, and regionally. Notable Broadway plays include Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and Lincoln Center's production of Macbeth with Ethan Hawke. She is currently in Merchant of Venice, a co-production between Theatre for a New Audience and Shakespeare Theatre Company. Her on-screen appearances include national commercials and popular shows, excuse me, such as Iron Fist, Blue Bloods, and Madam Secretary. Shireen's accolades include the Helen Hayes Award, Critics Circle Award nomination, Theater Circle Award nomination, and the Aldeco Award nomination. Shireen is the CEO and founder of Actors Prep LLC, the new online service providing quality readers to actors when they need them most. Shireen, hello! <laughs> hello, oh my goodness, what an introduction. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm so happy to be here right now. Oh my God, it's so good to see you and talk to you. (laughs) You too, and I'm so happy for you to be here as well. Y'all, Shireen's my buddy. We met, I think it's two years ago now. It's it's got to be a little bit more than two years because we started started in February. We started in, was it February of 2019 or March? Mm. March. No, no, no. Okay. Wait, no. It was March of 2020. 20, March of 2020. Yes. Yes. So March of 2020. Years. Yes. Y'all, is. we met in the Creative Entrepreneur Project through the Actors Fund. Yeah. And I just love her. I love her so much. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Wow. To see what you have done. I remember when you were talking about this podcast and look where you are today. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yes. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And so the first question I want to ask you Mm -hmm. is if I were to text you right now and say, Shireen, how are you doing? What's going on? How you feeling? But you could only respond in emojis only. Oh my what gosh. Would you me? I would do the smiley face with the closed lips and the rosy cheeks. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would have the the one with the um, monocle, the one monocle. Yes. <laughs> and then the other one with the finger pointing to the head mm-hmm. and then fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Thank you for that imaginary text. <laughs> I love it. Cause sometimes emojis can express better than words. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, we use our words well and we really can express, but sometimes you just got to text a lot of emojis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's kind of, and, and even as I'm thinking about, it, I'm actually doing the emoji now. I'm like, hmm, you are. You <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Exactly. Oh, 
I love it. I love it. Um, so yes, let's get into this conversation. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's start with the fact that when I read, thank you for answering my my questions, y'all. By now, you should know that I send my guests Google Doc of questions before I record with them. So, you know, we can kind of stay on topic. Um, (laughs) But I found out a little information that you were actually wanted to be a dancer first and then a doctor. And then you settled on acting. So, like, (laughs) take me back to young Shireen. And then we're going to walk through your career and pivots and life lessons. (laughs) Sure. So because I was born in New York and my family, my my family is originally from Guyana. Mm -hmm. My, for those who may not know, it's in South America, but they should know by now because you too, my dear. (laughs) My family's from Guyana as well. (laughs) Yes. So when I was younger, my mom wanted to make sure that I was in a lot of activities. And one Mm -hmm. of those things she had me in besides piano was dancing. Mm -hmm. So dancing, I fell in love with. I started when I was 10 and there was my second year or my third year recital. Mm -hmm. I decided to do a walking split in one of my, (laughs) one of the routine numbers. And I remember the applause that I got. It was just like crazy. And so after that, I was like, oh my God, I get attention for dancing. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a dancer. So I ended up in a junior high school for performing arts, Harbor Performing Arts um, in East Harlem. And that's where I studied dance. And then things happened and I ended up in math and science. And then that's like, Okay. okay, I'm going to be a doctor uh, because I was no longer dancing as much anymore. And now I was dealing with math and math and science. And then after that, when I got to high school, <laughs> this is an, this is where it gets really interesting. So my mm-hmm. freshman year of high school, because I got in there through my dance background, I got into this, uh, this community theater project someone came to my acting class and invited a bunch of students to come work on a, um, a project dealing about gun violence in the inner city. Okay. And I was one of the people that volunteered. So mm-hmm. it was initially a volunteer project. Got to the community theater, which is in St. Albans, Queens, Black Spectrum Theater is where it all began, giving a shout <laughs> out to them. Uh, and after the audition, it went so well, I ended up being cast as the lead for this, what turned out to be a kind of like an after school film Mm -hmm. about gun violence. And that was like quite the experience. And because of it, I was like, I'm going to do this for real. Cause I ended up in DC to lobby about gun violence. I ended up facilitating a workshop about gun violence. And then I had all these people wanted to talk to me about it. And I was like, oh, I can make a change through my acting. Mm -hmm. And then that was when I was like, if I'm going to do this, I have to study. I have to take it serious. And I Mm -hmm. ended up going to college for it. And then the story begins with me working towards becoming a professional actor. But that's that's how it shifted and changed (laughs) the course of my life. Yeah. Yes. So you were even pivoting before you knew what pivoting was. I guess so, girl. (laughs) (laughs) yes but you know I was still the funny thing is even as I was pursuing acting I was still Mm -hmm. dancing because my undergrad was musical theater so it didn't quite it didn't quite leave me because I was still dancing and my a lot of my family members thought I was going to continue to be a dancer and just focus on the dancing track um, Mm -hmm. as a musical theater student but I guess someone up there was looking out for me and had different plans for my life. So, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so there's a little court. You're like, you're staying in the acting field, but we're going to kind of focus you this way, kind of away right. from the musical theater. So right. with that, you know, how did you, in essence, make the decision to get both of your um, postgraduate degrees, one in London and then again, one in San Diego? Well, it was during that undergrad, where I went to in, in my, uh, for my undergrad program, I had a wonderful teacher uh, by the name of Candace Brown. She was my mm-hmm. freshman year um, uh, professor. And I think prior to meeting her, 
uh, I had a high school teacher, Jessica Rothman and Alan Rothman, and and they I still keep in contact with all three of these individuals. Okay. So I remember doing Hamlet with Jessica Rothman and Alan Rothman. We went. Mm-hmm. That we were a part of this thespian program. Um, and, and one of my first experience with Shakespeare was doing that. And she okay. cast me as Hamlet in this 15 minute version of Hamlet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so that was my exposure to classical theater. Okay. And then after that, I did a few monologues, but in college, maybe because I had that experience in high school, Candace thought that I would do really well with classical theater. We were doing something as an exercise. It was the Jabberwocky poem. And I remember her talking to me about it. And she said, you have a knack for language. And Mm -hmm. I I think you would do really well with classical text. And the more we talked and conversed about what that looked like, I eventually found out she had gotten accepted to East 15. And she was like, I never had, you know, I never went but I know it's an amazing school and and it's accredited and how it works with the U S and all of that. And so that became my goal. And I was like, I'm going to end up in England to study. And I first did a study abroad through, um, uh, Rutgers at the old globe in, Mm -hmm. in London and worked with some really phenomenal teachers and professors there. And while I was there found out I got accepted to East 15. Ah. So all of that allowed me to stay in England for almost two and a half years. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> and so I had an agent in England um, and I almost got a job in England, but it was so difficult for me to work there because mm-hmm. I wasn't a citizen. And unlike some of my classmates who decided to get married and stay there, I was like, you yeah. know, I'm going to go back to the States. And so mm-hmm. that's the reason why I didn't stay. And mm-hmm. then after after that first round, I worked six years regionally and commercial and a little bit of off Broadway mm-hmm. before I was like, well, I'm still not I'm still not where I want to be with mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. So I decided to pursue graduate school again. And then that's when I got accepted into the old globe um, in California. And the moment I completed that, it was like, wow, the doors busted wide open. I, I not only got my first agent immediately following my, my showcase in New York, which was in October, I started working on my first regional show the following month. So I was, and then I was working consistently, you know, just being mm-hmm. a, a working actor from there on. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I got you. I got you. So the <laughs> fact of even just wanting more, you were like, there was something in you that said, I'm not done yet. Like, I'm not done with the training and the learning. And I know there is somewhere I need to be. So let me continue. Exactly. Exactly. And I still feel that way today. Like, I'm still <laughs> learning and growing. I'm like, there's still more. There's, there's other things that I'm learning that I'm capable of doing. I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the more I put myself out there and take myself out of my comfort zone, the more I realize I have the capacity to learn and to mm-hmm. do and to change lives. And so, yeah, I, I think mm-hmm. curiosity is the, the thing that that I am most I feel most blessed to have is being curious. Ooh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to borrow that, Sharif. I like that. <laughs> Take yeah. it. Out there for the sharing, you know, grab it. <laughs> Come on, curiosity. Yes, we're very blessed to have curiosity and the ability to learn. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, you know, you're out here doing the thing, being an actor, being an actress, doing all the things, being on Broadway and television and all of this. So how did actors prep or that idea that wants that desire to create something come into your life? Well, if I'm speaking truth today, I have to uh-huh. say I was hitting my 40s. Okay. And I was like, I need to do something different besides acting. Okay. And I didn't know what it was. I, I just knew I was like, I need something that I can pass down, like I can leave behind. Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of my friends and families would say, well, your success as an actress and what you've done so far, I think that speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. 
However, I still felt that there was something else. There was something more. I think that's the theme of today's conversation is that there was yeah. something more. Uh-huh. And, and, and I didn't know what it was. And then I heard a story about my grandmother mm-hmm. and how she had her own newspaper business in Guyana. And my mom mm-hmm. was telling me this story one day. And I was just like, wow. And my mom was also sharing with me how she was the first to open a savings account for the family and what Mm. she was able to do with that. And, and I was like, oh, that's, that's empowering. Like whatever, you know, the, the Mm -hmm. fact that my grandmother was doing that. And then about seven or eight months after that conversation, I knew it was like close to the end of the year when the idea came to me, I had an audition. Mm-hmm. And I was so upset that I couldn't find the right reader mm-hmm. that that would ha- be able to help me because it was a fast turnaround. I had a I had to get this audition in by the next day, later in the next day, okay. and I didn't have the right reader, or I couldn't get the reader to sync up with my time schedule, and so mm-hmm. I ended up missing out on the opportunity to audition. And, mm. and I was so frustrated because it was a pilot. I can't even remember the name of the show, but it was a pilot that I was really excited about. And I said, oh, man, like this is this is so messed up that we don't have a, a, a business or something where we can just get a reader when we need one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, someone needs to to do something about this. And so I went to bed and the next morning I woke up and I was like, I think that should be me. I I think, (laughs) I think I need to create something. Mm -hmm. And so that was when the seed was planted. And I was like, now, how the hell am I going to do this? But, (laughs) but Uh yeah, I think I'm going to take this on. And and then that's when I started going down that path and going on that journey to try and figure out how to, to build it. And then the idea, the the way that I, I saw it started to come, but Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't go to business school. I, I don't know about software, I, you know, like coding and all of that, but Uh I knew I had to get it done. But so I I met some wonderful people who have been my mentors and my guide. And I can actually say I can do a little bit of coding now. (laughs) Yes, come on. (laughs) I'm nowhere close to being a software engineer, but I can do a little bit of coding if I have to. Like I know how to look things up. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Okay. Come on. Just a little casual, you know. Oh, by the way, I could do a little bit of coding. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So much. Um. So my question to you, be in this entrepreneurial journey. What lessons have you learned? Number one about being an entrepreneur, but really, what life lessons? that you learned prior, are you using right now in building your business and sustaining your business and also yourself as an entrepreneur? Mm. I think the thing that I'm, I'm learning, let me speak to what I'm learning now is that I come from a place and based on how I was raised of, of doing the best that I can do. Mm -hmm. Um, to the point where sometimes I feel like I have a little bit of that perfectionism, the, to being a perfectionist, and, uh-huh. and, and it can get in the way and stop you from, from allowing something to reveal itself or be, because if it's not exactly the way you want it to be, then you think that it, it's, it has no value to it. And, I, and, I, and that's the thing that I'm learning. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it's... Uh, that time frames constantly change. Uh-huh. You, you want something to happen at this set date, at this set time, uh-huh. <laughs> and you have to allow yourself to be flexible. Like I am learning about patience and flexibility in mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur because there's been so many times I would say, I'm going to have this done by this date at this time. And that date and that time will come around and I am nowhere close to it because other things happen. You know, you have to either wait for something to go through a legal channel or you have to wait for someone to finish proofing something that may take a little bit more work than you thought. Mm -hmm. Or it's just it's constantly changing and, and you can't just have set dates and times. You can work towards it. 
Yeah. But but uh, don't allow yourself to be trapped by a set date and time. Finding that flexibility and patience was something that I was always grown up, you know, brought up with. So learning to be patient and mm -hmm. flexible are the two major things that I'm learning as an entrepreneur. And I think growing up with learning about integrity, like my mom, my parents, both my mom and my dad, but my, my dad is no longer alive. Um, they they raised me as a person with integrity, mm -hmm. also believing that you are blessed, that you are protected, that you are um, looked over. So there's a part of me that also believes that um, destiny, like there are certain things that mm -hmm. will that will happen because yeah. it's meant for you. Yes. Uh, and so I, I, I believe in that, that even if this doesn't happen, if I don't see the results I want to see within three weeks, that it eventually will happen because I am on the path for it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think being raised that way of, of a person of integrity and believing that I am blessed and, 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 uh, and that my life is covered in that sense that I, I will be okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, understand. I understand that. And thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And I want to pick up on two things you said. One about the perfection and perfectionism, because mm -hmm. I, I'm raising my hand high. <laughs> <laughs> I call myself a recovering perfectionist mm. because there are definitely times that things that th the thought of not having it perfect or the thought of it not being this exact way has mm -hmm. stopped me. Right. Or when it doesn't turn out perfect, I scrap it. Nope, never mind. No one's ever going to see it because it didn't yeah. turn out the way I wanted it to. Yeah. And that will stop us all in our tracks if we let so it. So true. So true. Because I, you know what I, I, I mean, I have my beta version out right now of Actors Prep mm -hmm. and, and I know it's a good product and I can see how beautiful it is. And I, but I, but even in seeing it, I'm like, oh, I need to change that little thing or I need to mm -hmm. add that little thing. And I remember when we launched the first thing that everyone said to me, they were like, oh my God, Shireen, your website is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I was like, there's little things. <laughs> I, I mean, I was happy to hear that, but in the back of my mm -hmm. mind, I was like, oh, we still need to get that line straight, or we still need to reposition that photo or the, the, the writing there is still too small, or, you know, mm -hmm. you see the little things that you need to work on, but to the public, everyone was like, wow, this is your beta. This is mm -hmm. beautiful. It's, it's such a great product. And it's, it's not only beautiful to look at, but it's so efficient and it's, it runs smoothly. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know? Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, Shereen, I know. I know. But <laughs> I was like, it's beautiful, but you're like, but the line and, and the text and the thing. But that's also us. We're our own worst critics right. in every aspect of our lives. We, we're we nitpicky. That's just like, I think some people are more nitpicky than others, including yeah. myself. But that's just part. We're just like, but no. And then somebody be like, no, it's actually gorgeous. And you're like, thank, thank you. Yeah. Like. Oh. And learning to and learning to say thank you and and really believe it and accept it. That's the yes. other thing too. It's like when someone says something is 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 good or beautiful, I don't know if it's it, it got to be a woman thing because we're <laughs> we're quick to say, "Oh, but so and so, oh, but I can work on this." It's like, "No, uh -huh. thank you. Thank you." And have yes. you know, and believe that. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Saying thank you so much. And right. And that thank you was like, you're right. I did do that. And it is beautiful. And right. thank you for, you know, seeing it and acknowledging exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. yes. Even if so. we're like, but that dang line, I want to still say it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to tell them that. We could just say it in our minds. <laughs> That's exactly it. You say thank you and meet him and back of your head, you're like, but I still need I to straighten that, that line. <laughs> <laughs> that's it we just gotta, we gotta keep our comments to ourselves and just say exactly that's exactly it. that's it put it down in the journal at night just write it down in the journal <laughs> exactly exactly that's it that's i'm gonna just i'm gonna write this down and just say thank you thank you so much just thank you yes <laughs> and the second oh, thing that i wanted to pick up on what you said was integrity and mm -hmm. being flexible and patient with your timeline. Yeah. 
So knowing that, first of all, you do everything with integrity. And I think that's also where perfectionism kind of comes into play because you're like, no, I'm going to do this with integrity. Like I'm going to do it well and it's going to be something that I want, that I want to share with people, that's going to help people. So I do also think perfectionism plays into that. Um, But the fact of like being flexible and going, even if it doesn't happen in three weeks, it's still meant to happen, even if it's going to happen in three months. Right. And sitting in that confidence, that's hard. That is hard. And I'm learning. I'm learning that every day because I look at, it's like I want to get to the to the finish line so mm-hmm. quickly because I know what I have and I know what it can do. But I also have to be realistic in that I am mainly a creator. I, I, I'm a creative being. And what I can do is visualize and I can tell you how it looks and how it functions. But all the other things that it requires, mm-hmm. that's not my forte. And I'll be honest and say that. So I have to I have to engage the right people to make that happen. And that takes time for those mm-hmm. things to happen. Mm-hmm. So I have to be realistic that yeah, you may want this to happen in three weeks, but it will take three months for it to happen because it's not just you. It is mm-hmm. you who are putting it all together. I am the CEO, but I, I need a community. I need help from the other people to to make it happen. And I have to trust and allow that to happen. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, so my next question to you would be like, okay, let's put on your like arts educator hat here. Mm. Um, what is it that you want your students and your mentees to take away from when they interact with you, when they're in your class, when they go through your oh, curriculum? My what students will you tell you. Oh my gosh. My <laughs> students will tell you Miss Bab, because they all know me as Miss Bab. I don't do first okay. name basis because I'm old school like that. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, Miss Bab, the one thing, like I'm the cool teacher, uh-huh. but I'm cool with tough love. Okay. So they know when I speak to them, it's coming from a place of love, but I also, I treat them one, first and foremost, I treat them like professionals. Mm-hmm. So I don't talk down to them. I treat them as if they're on, and, and this is how I usually introduce myself to them. Today is your first day on set. Today is your first day in rehearsal. Mm-hmm. And over the course of these, of these next few months, we will be working together so that you can be the best truth tellers out there. Okay. When you step in front of that camera, when you step in front of that audience, what they will see you do is be alive, is Mm -hmm. live and be the most authentic you within that storytelling as you possibly can be. Like, that's what I usually say to my students in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so through the course of the journey of, of us getting to know each other, they can feel how much I care about their progress and they know that I owe the things that I ask of them is vulnerability and taking risk. And I think it has a lot to do with this generation or millennials, not so much, but this generation, I don't know what they are. They're X, Y, Z, wherever yeah. they fall. <laughs> <laughs> I think they Z, right? They're Z. I don't know. Don't quote yeah. me, y'all. Don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I think they have a fear of failing. Mm. And, and so they want, because they're so used to, to having everything right at hand's reach and seeing things looking perfect, you know, as they scroll mm-hmm. through that mm-hmm. they believe that that's how everything is always supposed to be perfect and, and without failure. And mm-hmm. so I try to get them to embrace failing because that's where we get our, the best lessons. You know, if yeah. we make a mistake, then we know what to work on, mm-hmm. um, and, and you have to be vulnerable to allow yourself to explore all facets of yourself. If you're not yeah. allowing yourself to, to take risks and to be vulnerable, how can you grow as an artist? Uh, mm-hmm. And so those are the two main things. I usually start the first week, two weeks of, of my lessons with is vulnerability and risk, risk, risk taking um, mm-hmm. so that they can feel comfortable exploring. And then yeah. I just, I just, Guide them with tough love. <laughs> yes. 
I love that. I love that. Y'all can't see her smile, but just the way she's talking about her students, like Sharina has a smile on her face right now. And like I guide them with tough love. Like I love it. Like that smile yeah. is just giving me everything right now. I, I, I never thought that I would, I, cause I didn't think I was a teacher and, and okay. people were like, yeah, Shereen, you can, you, you, you have the ability to teach, but I, mm-hmm. I always thought I could just do acting, but I can't teach acting. And I've oh. learned that I actually can and have been pretty successful at uh, NYCD with it. So CDA. Yeah. So, yes. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and what you're teaching them actually, as you were talking, I'm like, yeah, vulnerability and like being okay with failure. And like, that's like life, like not even just for acting class. That is something that they can take, should take, hopefully take into every every aspect of their lives. Yeah. One of my students actually said that to me. I actually okay. I should I want to find I, I I won't say her name, but I want I would love to read you if we have time as we're talking. I'll find it. She wrote me this beautiful uh letter after the end of their semester. Mm-hmm. And I I was moved to tears in reading it because uh I, I know that I have an effect on my students, but I didn't realize that I had such an effect on her um, okay. because she was, this was her introduction to acting. Okay. And it was, it was quite moving. So um, if I can find it, I'll, 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 I'll read it out to you, but I thought it was so beautiful. And it was her talking about this being a life lesson and not just um, about acting. Right, so. right. I love it. <laughs> All right. Oh, y'all, I see Serena scrolling through the phone. Did you find it? <laughs> yeah, I found it. <laughs> so she's, uh, she starts off with, hello, Miss Bab. I sincerely hope your week has been going well. I just wanted to reach out and truly thank you for the time and care you have put into this class thus far. Before starting here, I had never been exposed to this sort of acting technique. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't incredibly intimidating. But the way in which you went about teaching and the energy you brought to the workspace every day actively contributed to a positive learning experience. I wanted to let you know that your hard contributions hard, hard contributions didn't go unnoticed or unappreciated, especially as you're still a working actor. I just think very highly of you as an educator and an artist, and I'm thankful for the time I've had in class with you. I know my perfectionist tendencies can sometimes come across as stubbornness or hostility, but it honestly stems from a passion and eagerness about the work I'm doing. So I hope it was never mistaken for the, any sort of negative energy. Thank you for talking to me while I was upset one day. I suppose emotional outbursts like that are normal considering the material so demanding of vulnerability, but I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me through that. I feel like a more confident, capable actor, and you've played a big role in that. You will be missed by the whole section. (laughs) Oh, sure. (laughs) Oh, I have chills, y'all. And I've literally, like, I literally have tears in my eyes. Oh, my goodness. (gasps) Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah. And and it's not even the one that she talks about life, but this is another letter. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. yes. Oh, my word. Yeah. Yes. So I like when I get letters like these, I I know that I'm doing something meaningful uh, and mm-hmm. that I'm I'm making a difference in their lives. So right. yeah, that's proof in itself that I that I'm capable of being a teacher. <laughs> yes, very very beyond capable. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. And knowing it's having an impact in every aspect of their lives and like. Mm-hmm the acting class is a vehicle for you to like impart your wisdom and your love and like your knowledge and like don't worry I'm a perfectionist too so I don't understand what you're doing just do the monologue again and try not to be perfect (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah and and the thing is and I think it's because I know they they will eventually get to monologues and scenes, but what I start out with is them really focusing on themselves. So I force them through exercises to to really understand who they are as individuals because Mm. they're just starting this journey. Yeah. 
And yeah, you'll eventually learn how to do a monologue. You'll eventually learn how to do a scene well. But mm -hmm. if you don't have the foundation, which starts with self, then yeah. how can you build on that? So yeah. you have to understand who you are. And I think that's why it's so my classes are, are not very easy for them because uh -huh. I'm, I'm forcing them to confront themselves, to deal yeah. with themselves in yeah. all truth, in all facets, in all colors, shades. And, and that's not an easy thing to do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You're right. It's not an easy thing to do. And it's not something that we are readily taught. No. We're taught the exact opposite, actually. If you don't yeah. like it, just put it just put it away. Yeah. Put it, put it in the drawer somewhere. <laughs> put it under the rug. You don't you don't got to you don't got to focus on it. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think with them starting this way. And, and then I've had a few of them who, who came to my performances. So okay. I had one student who came to see me in Connecticut and then came to see me at Tafana, a theater for okay. new audience. And she was like, Miss Bab, everything that you've taught us, I saw you doing and, and the difference in your characters and, and, and how you carry that, char how that character walked onto the stage and the presence. Yeah. And, and I'm like, see, so I, it's proof and it, the proof is within what I'm doing. It's not yeah. me teaching you you know, and I don't have any basis for it. It's how I work. And that's what I'm instilling and imparting to you is, is how, how to go about in creating these characters. Yeah. From self. That, right. That's it. You're literally walking. You, you, what is it? You are what you preach. You, you are, are what you preach or you are what you eat. What is it? You eat? I don't actually you know. <laughs> Y'all, we'd make it things up. But <laughs> the, the point of this is what I'm trying to instill in you I live it every single moment. Exactly. Yes, 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 yes. So I would like to ask you, what would be your nugget of wisdom for any and everybody? They don't have to necessarily be in the arts, just for a fellow human being. What would be just your little nugget of wisdom to be like, you know what? This is my little advice I have for you. Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> Um, I prefer not, but if you want, but if it makes the sentence more impactful, I can mark this episode as explicit. Well, so I have to preface it with this okay. because, and then I'll explain what the nugget is. Okay. But karma is a bitch, right? Yes. So I always say, treat others the way you would like to be treated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I walk into any space that I'm in. And I try to be as wholehearted and as open-hearted as I can be, mm -hmm. treating everyone with respect, and kindness, uh, love, mm -hmm. and as generous as I can be in the moment with what, I, what I'm capable of offering, mm -hmm. and always with integrity. And I think anyone who speaks to you about me, or if they say, hey, do you know Shireen? They're like, oh, my God, the thing that I know someone would say about me, oh, my God, mm -hmm. she's so warm. She's so loving. She's so sweet. And then, they, you know, all the other things would come following. But I think how you treat someone says a lot about you, how you how you uh, welcome someone into your space says a lot about you, says mm -hmm. a lot about what your secure about or insecure about. And, yes. and, and I think just remember that people talk and mm -hmm. whether it's in this industry or this world is actually smaller than we think. Our industry is way smaller than we think. <laughs> yeah. And so things get around and people speak. So just be mindful of how you treat others, how you treat everyone, because Karma is a bitch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. I love that. And I 100% agree with you. And to even tack on to what you said, treat, you know, how you treat others is a reflection of you. But mm -hmm. also I've been learning and kind of, you know, and observing people like how you treat others is also a reflection of how you treat yourself. Yeah. You're like, mm, yeah. Oh, that's, maybe? that's good. 
Mm-hmm. Because I, I believe in that too. Like treat others the way you want to be treated. But the problem, unfortunately, is some people don't even treat themselves well. So how can they treat other people well? Oh my God. Now that's something I'm going to take from you. <laughs> Go right ahead. It's, Go at home ahead and share it. <laughs> yeah. That it's that. Yeah. Because for me, and, and growing up, for me, that was such a simple idea. Also, because I was taught it, I was displayed it by my mom and my father and my aunties and my uncles. Like, literally, you treat people with kindness. You open a door. You say thank you. You say that. Like, I, it was displayed. So when someone exactly. says treat someone well, treat someone like you wanted to be treated, Oh, yes, I'm going to treat them with warmth and openness and like like that I, that makes sense to me. Sense like to that, me. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, like I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. I, like sometimes it's hard for me. I don't know. I, I I sometimes have situations where I will I will make it a point to acknowledge that someone said something and then mm-hmm. I will either ingratiate them with that and say, Oh, th- you know, thank you so much for that. Or, or you didn't have to do that. And, and others will look at me like, why are you thinking? And they should do it. I was like, it's because I'm acknowledging that person, that that person is, is doing something that, mm-hmm. that should be worthy of acknowledging. And, and I think yeah. the more you do that, I think it also encourages that person to continue doing it. Yes. So yes. it's, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if that makes sense, but it I do feel strong about how you treat that person. It's it, like you said, I like this. It's possibly how I treat myself, but mm-hmm. it's how I want to be treated as well. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Shereen, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> oh. Of course, man. Of course. <laughs> so before I let you go, two last mm-hmm. things. Number mm-hmm. one, where can the people find you on the interwebs? Oh, my goodness. Well, you can personally find me. Um, uh, my Instagram is shoebabs. So that's my personal Instagram. You can look up my name, Shireen Bab, for all things related to my acting and what I'm doing. Uh, for actress prep, uh, it's one word. So it's A-C-T-R-S-P-R-E-P. Uh, but for the website, it's without the O. So it's A-C-T-R s p r e p dot com actress prep without the o dot com or you can just type in actress prep one word and the website will come up uh and our handle for social media is actress prep full word um llc so it's actress prep llc okay got it thank you don't worry y'all i will put all of that in the show notes so you can just click and uh Find and connect with Shereen. Yes. So and subscribe, follow no. us, subscribe, yes. follow us. Uh, so you can be on the list to hear all the new things that we're doing uh, and tell all your friends about us and get the word out there that there is actual vetted readers out there ready to work with you, whether it's auditions, rehearsals, whatever the need may be, we're there. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I must say to you that I acknowledge you, I celebrate you, and I uplift you. Oh, my gosh. Saying to you, my love. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. (laughs) You're so very welcome. You're so very welcome. (laughs) Please feel free to visit this episode's show notes for links to get in touch with my guest, as well as a link to rate and review my podcast on Podchaser. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, all you have to do is scroll down to the rate and review section. You can find and connect with me on Instagram at The Artist Pivot to see audiograms, fun facts, and posts featuring my guests. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to get notified when a new episode is out. And please share this episode with at least one friend. For those who are working on their mental health and well being, on a journey of facing your fears, or trying therapy for the first time, Our show sponsor, BetterHelp, is here to help you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. BetterHelp makes professional therapy accessible and affordable with 20,000 plus therapists in their network and the ability to request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. I have found that therapy is a tool to use to improve your life in one of the healthiest ways. So join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. So many people use BetterHelp that they are currently recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. 
Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash artist pivot. That's better com slash artist pivot. Ever heard the phrase found time? Well, Audible helps you find the time to get more stories and information while commuting, cooking, gardening, exercising, etc. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and self-development. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily news digests, as well as guided meditation programs. They have podcasts, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. Fun fact, if you listened to every title on Audible, you'd be listening for more than three centuries. So click the link in the show notes or visit audibletrial.com slash theartistpivot to start your 30-day free trial of Audible and listen to that book you haven't read yet or laugh at a comedy special while doing the dishes. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash theartistpivot. Using the link lets Audible know that we sent you and a great way to support the show. This episode was edited by Kieran Niemant and produced by me, Ayana Major Bay. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll speak to you soon.